The next presentation will be by a group um, who has been managing the APAN uh, network. Uh, there's the KDDI, uh, KDDI. <laughs> uh, okay, start to start. So hi, why is the uh, preparations of the, uh, yes. So uh, I'm Kiro Takasato from the uh, EPANJP and the also from the KDDI. So the, what is EPANJP is that the, uh, uh, around the 1998, so the, uh, we formed the uh, APANJP, uh, the cooperation with the uh, NII, NICT, and Mafi and White. So the, uh, since around that, so the, uh, I was like this tall but at, at, the way, at the time, so, but the, uh, since then, so the, uh, we had the, uh, net, uh, we are operating the networks and the, uh, right around the, uh, what is that? Like six or seven years ago, uh, we have formed the uh, GXP. Uh, no, no, no. Three years ago. Uh, around five years ago, I guess. So the, uh, we have formed the uh, GXP Tokyo. So the, uh, I was supposed to present this. At the, I, I, I added this slide like five minutes ago. So at the, uh, we have the uh, lots of the uh, connectors in the uh, GXP Tokyo. So the, uh, of course, the uh, Japanese entrance and also the uh, Pacific Wave and the uh, Transpark and the, uh, of course, the uh, ASTI, ASNET. So then it's also the, uh, uh, if you if you connect to the JXP Tokyo, so that it, it means that you, you could go to anywhere in, this, in the Japanese entrance. And the uh, new JXP point that the uh, Akasan just, just present last in the last hour, is a expansion or is a, is a cooperation with the current JXP Tokyo. So that is your... Uh, Current the uh, GXP Tokyo, so that the uh, we will see more of the upgrades in the coming years for now. And the uh, for topics of the uh, our slides will be the uh, operation and with the main collaboration is Aponet and the uh, installation of the Ripe Atlas. And the uh, we are uh, we are currently doing some the uh, backbone migration. So the uh, code I will be the, talking about that, and the uh, I'm gonna present the, some of the network the uh, research activities uh, on the APANJP if we have some time. So the, uh, yes. Okay. So first I will. First I will talk about the operation with many collaborators in APANET and. My name is Chen Shisun and I work as a network operator member in APNJP. So this is APNJ backbone and APNJP has multiple back backup links. The main path is the link colored in red and which is NICD J Japan Hong Kong link and the Hong Kong Singapore link. For backup paths, there are four passes. From last APN meeting, Luckily, we have no big outage or maintenance in main pass. However, there were some small outage, outage but thanks for all members who provide us backup links. Availability, av av availability of APNG backbone is 100%. Well, how about the other links availability rate in Asia during this time range? So here is the link availability rate around Asia. As you know, submarine cable is very important because 99% of international communication is achieved by submarine cables. However, because of many reasons, it is difficult to maintain link availability above 95%. So mutual cooperation between organizations is very important for us. For example, in this period, Arnett Singapore First link was down in November to December, and during this time, the traffic was detoured by Guam Singapore Consors Consortium link, Arnett Sydney Guam link, and Arnett Perth Sydney link. And another detour, detour case is a mutual backup case. The, when Korean Korea Hong Kong link was down from November to January, during this time traffic was detoured via Kisti's link. While Kisti Korea Singapore link was down, the traffic was detoured by using Korean Korea Singapore link. Although each organization's link availability was around 50%, mutual backup allows to maintain each other's backbone network. 
So just like the example I said, it is very important to have backup links to increase resiliency. To make this possible, there are many communities of international RNA network, and joining these communities allows us to receive benefits, like as we described. And APNGB backbone has an increased network resiliency and also participation in several communities have led to active mutual co cooperation with overseas research, research and education network organization. However, inadequate capacity planning during re route has resulted in a traffic overflow situation during failures. So for this reason, we think that we have to consider ways to share information between each community. Ready to this, there is a new project called Metronova, as Brenda mentioned in last session, and sharing the information by each community like in the way is expected to further research and cooperation activities using international circuits in the future. So the next topic and is about installing a bar wrap alas probe. So first, what is RIPE Atlas? And RIPE Atlas provides us the enable measuring internet connectivity and the reachability in real time and by installing a probe all over the world. The probe is as shown in the photo below the right. And RIPE NCC collects data from the probes around the world to provide visualization tools such as internet maps, data tools, and so on. However, to build a large probe network, RIPE NCC needs help from people in all over the world to host probe. So to get people in the world to host probe, RIPE NCC enable who host the probe to use the entire RIPE Atlas network to conduct customized measurements that provide valuable data about their own networks. And the hosting probe is very free and easy. And the biggest benefits for hosting probe is can measure six types of protocols. These measurements can be used for a variety of things, such as investigating and troubleshooting network issues with quick, flexible connectivity checks. Also, there is an interesting credit system that probe has. The amount of credit consumed depends on the measurement you customize. So if your measurements are very complex, the amount of credit you cost will be high. You can earn these credits by hosting or sponsoring one or more probes. However, when you stop the working probe, you can't earn it, so it is important to keep it running it. So APNGB started the hosting probes and the probe was provided by Mr. Chihu from APNIC and thank you for provide, providing it for us. And we installed a probe by connecting to our switch and after that we could so the probe was recognized and appear in RIPE Atlas website. So now we can start measuring something and we try to measure using ping to our website from 50 random probes in the world. And the results shows the country we probe at and the round trip time to our website and the packet loss. Also, you can see the results in the world map visualizing the results. So it can easily understand from which country to ping was sent and what the RDT value was. So as you can see, the RIPE Atlas is very easy to implement and can be used for many things. So if you have interest in it, please try to have one. And next, uh, from me, I will introduce the update of seg uh, segment routing MPRS uh, deployment for layer two and layer three services that I'm currently working on. Uh, the first is the uh, purpose of segment uh, SR MPRS implementation. Uh, in recent years, uh, we have focused on improving uh, resiliency and availability. And as a result, isolated outage rarely occur at sites with multiple paths. And therefore, uh, as a faster backbone improvement, uh, we are working on the realization of flex flexible traffic engineering uh, based on your needs. And so uh, we are now introducing segment uh, SRMPRS to APANJP backbone. 
Uh, next, uh, I explain the overview of segment routing. Uh, segment routing is the source routing method to represent network as segments. Uh, segment defines the action performed on the packet and segment list was encoded by the send node in the packet. And uh, each router has a segment ID called the sheet uh, and it is used for specifying a route. Uh, this figure shows the overview of the segment routing and packets come from CE1 and R1 receive it. And the send node R1 encodes the segment list into packets uh, based on requirement. Uh, for example, uh, user A uh, with no specific requirements uh, using IGP metric for traffic engineering. And so R1 encodes uh, R4 sheet uh, 04 and the packet pass through orange route. On the other hand, uh, for bandwise metric traffic engineering, uh, uh, in user B, uh, the send node encodes 02, 03, 04, and it passes through green line. So the uh, the intermediate devices uh, refer to the uh, assigned segment and performs this action, and the end node R4 decodes the packet and delivers it to CE2. Uh, this is the overview of segment routing. Uh, traffic engineering methods on the uh, SRMPLS backbone uh, are not limited to specifying segment ID sheet. Uh, so next, I will introduce the method of traffic engineering example. Uh, the first one is flex algo. Uh, the sheet must be set for each flex algo, and flex algo realizes that the optimal route uh, can be cal calculated automatically based on multiple requirement. Uh, including the selection of routers and passes, so on. So it is no need to specify seat for traffic engineering. And this diagram is an example of flex algo and the flex algo zero, which means default is based on IGP metric for traffic engineering. Uh, on the other hand, flex algo one, uh, color green, uh, is based on bandwidth capacity. So it is suitable for users using high bandwidth. Uh, in addition, uh, Flex Algo 2, a yellow color, cannot only perform latency-based uh, route routing, but also avoid passing through a specific router. Uh, therefore, uh, by using uh, Flex Algo, it is possible to more flexibly traffic engineer for each user and experiment without specifying seat. The second is the virtual routing and forwarding, VRF. Uh, by creating a VRF, the routing table can be split and uh, it is possible to use duplicate IP addresses uh, if the VRFs are different. Uh, furthermore, a routing policy can be changed for each routing table. So by utilizing VRF and flex algo, a more flexible uh, design is possible uh, on new SRMPS backbone. Uh, this is a summary of the new things that uh, can be done with segment routing as a new SRM-based backbone enables more flexible traffic engineering and it also enables source routing, L2, L3, VPN, and splits the routing table and automatically fast rerouting. Uh, these are the progress of construction. In virtual testing environment, uh, we have already built the backbone and L layer 2 and layer 3 connectivity. Uh, today, I will talk about the new update of deploying the SRMPLS in production environment. And our router is uh, Juniper MX series and IGP was selected, uh, selected uh, ISIS because the implementation is faster, faster than OSPF. And the backbone is built with private before only. Uh, we completed uh, construction of the main parts and the IBGP. So after verifying layer two, layer three VPN, we will migrate uh, peers to SRMPS new backbone and set the other uh, backup pass. And then uh, uh, thanks to the help of Shingaren, uh, we can verify layer three VPN services in a real production environment. Uh, this diagram shows uh, both of peers uh, between Japan and the uh, Singapore uh, configured on VRF main and established BGP with Shingaren in Singapore and established BGP with uh, Japan S131935 in Tokyo 1. 
Uh, we can confirm that both EGPPS are established. And next, uh, the routing information received from single end in Singapore is advertised to each router and that is a uh, MPS VPN level uh, 26, uh, let's circle one. And the route is uh, received at Tokyo one with VPN level 26. Then uh, check the route to the single sub server on uh, to at the Tokyo one. Uh, we can see from the real offshore route, uh, the source node Tokyo one stacks VPN level 26 and uh, sheet uh, 26050, uh, which is the sheet of the uh, Singapore router, our Singapore router. This shows that packets from uh, Japan to Shingaren are routed by uh, segment routing sheet and over LC VPN. Uh, ping from the uh, Japan reached to the single and we could confirm that the layer 3 VPN worked correctly on the production environment. And this is a trace root result. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Sorry. And this is a trace route result and the IP address of the Raya VPN section is not shown. This one, uh, Tokyo 2 and Hong Kong side uh, uh, is not shown. Then uh, these are future work and the first is to continuously consider network requirements and design. And the second one, second is, uh, is L2 VPN test on production environment. And the third is to migrate the traffic from the current backbone. Uh, this involves configuring as a backup pass, checking for rerouting and march migrating all settings. Uh, the fourth is for devices that cannot use the logical system, such as uh, Juniper PTX. We should confirm whether the table can be split uh, by changing the AS, the AS number. Uh, finally, possible uh, interconnect test with other environments as an experiment. The first step for this is to build an SRMPS backbone. Introducing. So yeah, string routing is yeah as fast to good to but yeah it seems working. So yeah, we are currently going to migrate that. And the uh, next is the uh, some of the uh, network research activities. So the uh, this is the uh, collaboration with the uh, coast from the uh, uh Saudi Arabia. So with uh, Alex, which who is not here, but the. Uh, uh, I we had a chat with him at the uh, perhaps at the internet or something, and the uh, so they he tried to the move traffic from the uh, Saudi Arabia all the way to the SC23 venue, which is Denver, and the uh, then then by the coordinates of the uh, NICT, we could carry a 100G server to the uh, Denver. So then, then I gave I gave a shot. Uh, chance and the uh, it did move. So the uh, this is uh, the reason for this is the uh, uh, cost recent activity for the leaf scapes distortion projects. So the uh, they're kind of the uh, making a digital twin for the uh, coral reef at the uh, near the Saudi Arabia. So the uh, uh, so they are. Uh, so at the Saudi Arabia, so they, they are doing the sensors and then move the data to the uh, all the way to the San Diego and they make the data twin out there. So the uh, we need we, uh, they had to make a solution to move the data from the Saudi Arabia all the way to the US. So the uh, this is set up for the uh, C23. So the uh, uh, the Rex red uh, shape is a server in the King. Saudi Arabia and the uh, the right one is the uh, server in the uh, at the SC twenty three venue, which is in US Denver. And the uh, I set up the uh, two server uh, for the testing. So the uh, I got the server old server uh, from the KDI and if it's equipped with the one hundred gigabytes at the uh, Tokyo and the uh, then 
I got a new server、uh, from KDDI for the 100G, with the 100G equipment. So the,、uh, it looks kind of old, right? And the,、uh, it has, I have installed the Melanox Connect, Connect X and the move to the、uh, US Denver. And the、uh, result looks fine <laughs> for some way. So the,、uh, we use the、uh, several protocols、uh, to move the data. And the,、uh, since it didn't go well, but the,、uh, After the、uh, help from the、uh, Marcos from RMP、so、at the venue, so that we could achieve the、uh, 51.9 gig by the、uh, BBR V2. So that is the results. On the,、uh, on the other hand,、uh, I'm, well, we are also, the,、uh, I'm also from, the, I'm from KDDI. So KDDI is currently the,、uh, selling the other starting. So the,、uh, I asked the RI san to get one of these, and he said yes. So then I started the、uh, DMC and the、uh, result. So the, the, the setup for the、uh, starting. So the,、uh, so I got a、uh, starting device at the、uh, KDA Yamaguchi Satellite Communication Center, which is、uh, all of the satellites it's there. So the, I got one of these and the, I had to go like the、uh, 200 kilometers, 1000 kilometers for going there and install the server. And the,、uh, around the eight group uh, attended, the,、uh, attended the DMC. And the, one of the、uh, teams、uh, had a significant job there. So the、uh, satellite, and so Starlink is a satellite service. So the,、uh, it,、uh, the cloud affects the service itself. So what they did was the,、uh, actually seeing the rain radar to see the, how the、uh, cloud condition is. And then Uh, they kind of the,、uh, adjust the throughput on the、uh, server as well. So that we call it the、uh, cloud network in some way. So, the,、uh, so they got the best results、uh, from the starting、uh, throughput point of view. So the,、uh, this is the result. So the,、uh, it's going to be shared at the、uh, next SC Asia, right? I guess. <laughs> okay. It's <laughs> great. So that is、uh, from me, from the APAN JP as well. So thank you for the、uh, time and thank you for the、uh, collaboration. Thank you. It,、uh, it really covers a lot. Yep. Oh, yeah. Chi Hu. Chi Hu from AP Nick.、Yeah. So, so I name you.、Yeah. <laughs> thank you.、Um, Uh, thanks for mentioning、uh, my name and also uh, uh, LS Probe.、Uh, in fact, I have five LS Probes with me this time.、Uh, if you are interested in hosting、uh, one of this,、uh, yeah, please、uh, contact me.、Um, another thing is, you know,、um, you mentioned、uh, segment routing. In fact,、uh, on Thursday,、uh, we'll have segment routing training. Uh, so, if you want to know more, learn more about segment routing, yes, please attend the training. And the training will be conducted by our trainer, Makito, over there. Makito, can you stand up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Please. We'll see、Thank、you on you. Thursday. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Yeah. Musum from Kisti. Yeah. Yeah, this is Pusung Job from Kisi.、Uh, I'm so interested in the Starlink the connection.、Uh, what I'm curious about how many bandwidths you can get it, and、uh, is there any special price to the using the Starlink in terms oh, of the,、oh, our yeah. LN? So the,、uh, yeah, my sales over there, as I, Arai san, is looking at me. The,、uh, the bandwidth itself is Crash file information, but the,、uh, for this room, so I can say it's around the、uh, 200 million. Uh, 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 u
do that opinion in Korea also. So, uh, is there any we do we need any negotiation with the, that thing to use the selling thing? So, in, in your if you have any information over the experience, let me know about yeah. that. So, greater. <laughs> yeah, over a drink and yeah, you find out more. <laughs> Actually, uh, uh, any, any other questions? If not, I, I do have on oh, the yeah. segment routing. I, I think um, it is critical um, because in our recent demonstration with the medical uh, telesurgery where there is latency involved, then you, you, you would really want to use segment routing, although we didn't use it because yeah. we, we <laughs> it wasn't really up yet. Um, that's where we start differentiating the different traffic push uh, uh the boundaries yeah any any comments from that who's who's give uh Chi -hoo who's who's giving the ah uh what's your comment about segment routing you you, you want to promote segment routing <laughs> just want to you know provide more like uh technical training for you guys to understand more before you decide on that. yeah Any other questions for this team from KDDI? Uh, if not, let's thank them for yeah. it. Thank you. We next um, ask um, Kyuk Lian, who is an um, executive committee member from Singaran, to talk about the Singapore Open Exchange. Um, she's a staff from ACRC A Star. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. First, I want to say that, but the scalability and ease of the deployment. Yeah, so right one, the very small, you just plug it in. Yeah. So, Jihoo, uh, uh, you, you have five of those. Somebody raised their hand up here. Uh, <laughs> Uh, 
Okay, so that's that's right. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is uh Gyotlin. So I'm a Singaporean uh, exco. I'm also from ACRC. So I will give you an update on the Singaporean Open Exchange on its uh inter international connectivity and also on the local uh development. So Singaporean is also um uh, part of the A uh, East Asia Resilient Backbone Networks, in which uh Singaporean has signed an MOU. Uh, in the last APEN meeting. And um, these are the partners that uh, actually came on board together to agree each other to use their link as a backup link. So all these are 100 gig links. So from here, we can see that Singapore has uh, multiple links from um, Singaporean to Hong Kong to Japan and uh, also from Singapore to Hong Kong uh, to South Korea. So with this, uh, the partners actually came together to provide a resilient backbone within the uh, East Asia. Okay, and for the Asia Europe ring, um, Singapore currently Singapore currently has uh, multiple hundred link links from Singapore to uh, London to Amsterdam, and also there's a link from uh, Singapore towards Japan and to uh, Amsterdam. So this actually forms the Asia Europe ring, providing uh, backup resiliencies. Okay, and uh, as part of the APOnet, Singaporean has uh, multiple, um, sorry, Singapore to Japan has multiple backup redundancies. So the primary link is actually going from Singapore to Hong Kong to Japan. Uh, this is our uh, primary link. And then in case that the link breaks down, it will go through the uh, Singapore to Japan direct uh, via the Kisti link, uh, the Singapore Guam, and also via the uh, RNET. So these are the multiple backup links that we have here. So thanks to all these partners, we have come together to build this resiliency of the backbone. Okay, and the uh, resiliency of all these partnerships actually uh, could be seen during the outages in 2023. And um, on 28th of January to 28th of April, a period of three months, there was actually an outage of 98 days uh, during uh, at the subsea cables. And there was a cable break of uh, 130 kilometers out of Singapore. So during this period of time, there was actually uh, no service impact because of the multiple backup links for this. And uh, concurrently, in February, there was actually a break in the Sinet Singapore to Japan link. So uh, the Guam link, Singapore Guam link actually took over as the primary link. So the traffic wasn't affected at all. So you can see here, this is the break of the three months and the traffic actually took over from uh, uh, Singapore Guam. You can see the traffic increase and also to the Singapore Japan link. So the Singapore Guam 100 gig uh, went down as well on the uh, 24th of May uh, to 10th of June. And that was a 16 days outage due for fiber cuts at the Dumai segment. And the Singapore uh, to US traffic wasn't affected because our premier link was actually through the Singapore, Hong Kong, Japan, US link. Okay, and um, the CAE 100 gig, uh, there, was a, uh, there was a circuit maintenance of 31 days as well. And um, the traffic was rerouted to Singapore, Hong Kong, Japan, uh, Netherlands, Trans-Siberian Trans Path with two backup paths via the cows in place. Okay, and this is the update of the Sing Singapore Lightwave Internet Exchange. So for the um, slicks, you can see the blue path, right? This is actually the slicks one where we form a ring from Singaporean at Global Switch. Uh, that's connecting to our partners in NUS, uh, ASTAR, and also the NTU. So the, there was during that time, there was only one pop in Global Switch. And so we uh, came about to, to build a uh, resiliency for Singaporean, and that is actually, uh, we built a second pop at the Equinix SG3. So this pop was actually online in 2021. Okay, and then um, presently, there are already two pops in Singaporean. So that is the... the the two boxes that you can see in blue. And then at the partner side, the, the core uh, nodes were actually at NUS, NTU, and ASTAR. Previously, there were only one node each. 
So we actually came about to build uh, additional nodes for added resiliencies at both sides. So you can see the NUS actually have one link to Global Switch and one to the Equinix. The same goes to the A-Star and NTU links. So NICC was actually uh, at the same location at, at A-Star here. So we actually share the same backbone. Okay, and then moving forward, uh, we are thinking of extending the Singer reach to our Institute of uh, Higher Learning. Um, and that is to the Singapore Institute of Technology, SIT, Singapore University of Design Technology, SUTD, and also the Danyang Polytechnic. So the tender has already been called for the dark fiber and uh, is in a tendering phase. Uh, next, we will be looking into building the equipment to connect up this link. Okay, and then the SOE1, uh, the router is due for tech refresh. The tender has really been awarded and is in progress for implementation. Okay, so this is the uh, overview of the Singaran Open Exchange. So we can see here there's a SOE1, which is the one that we mentioned at the Global Switch, and the SOE2, which is the one at the uh, Equinix. So um, there are more connections going to SOE1, but there are already a couple of uh, 100 gig links that's already connected to SOE2. So this two will add as a redundancy for each other. And then the main nodes that we can see in the middle. So this is the NTU, ASTAR, uh, NUS, NSCCs. Both have a connection to the single open exchange one and two. So in case of uh, the link failure at one side, the link will actually be routed through the uh, single exchange, single open exchange two. Okay, thank you. That's a short update. Thank you, everyone. Any questions on the Singaporean Open Exchange? Uh, well, then, then I, I have an answer without a question. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just going to say, um, we. We are actually transiting, we have two pods, and the link between them is actually um, by single rate dark fibers, and we have multiple dark fibers between them as well. Uh, in actual fact, we procure, just to share with you, it's good if you can have an IRU on the dark fiber, then you can do what you want on those dark fibers. Uh, we have been upgrading and, and doing resilience on, on that. Uh, between our first pop uh, and global switch to uh, Equinix, we carry all the traffic. Example of that is the traffic from um, uh, from sir, no, no, uh, from e e Europe, yeah, all the way to uh, Equinix, Equinix to uh, uh, global switch, and global switch back to uh, Academic of Science, China. Uh, we carry a, quite a bit of the traffic across our pipe. So if you, it doesn't matter whether you land in e Equinix or Global Switch, okay? We we'll carry your traffic across each other. I'm hoping that uh, more more links will slowly come in on Equinix to balance it out a little bit. But uh, whichever pop you you land in, we will carry your traffic across the other side, and it's open open exchange. Yeah. I was curious about uh, your thoughts on uh, 400G uh, at the exchange. Currently, 400G is very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> the interface is there. Um, I already have a, um, a heads up from one of the con current connection, which is 100G uh, for 400G connection next year. So I, I have to prepare. It, it's not only just the port at, at the front end, but the back end also needs to upgrade. So, so it, 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 it's not, so you have to be careful. So if someone's coming in at 400G as a pop, you really have to look at the back end and how to upgrade to cope with that uh, traffic. You know, it's no use coming at 400G and then at your back end, you only got 200G and you can't do anything about that. So those are some of the questions that we are asking and looking at how to upgrade ourselves, uh, you know, and what the cost going to be. Any, any, anything? Any? Sorry. Did, did, did I answer your question? Yeah. Uh, Guildland has been helping us, uh, working together with us uh, at the Exco and helping us with our network upgrades. Um, so, yeah, we, we want to learn from, from 
everyone, you know, the, the US, you'll get the upgrade to 400G and I think it was very costly, was it James? <laughs> James is from uh, the VP for infrastructure, is it? VP for infrastructure, uh, yeah, network services, yeah. Do you want to introduce yourself a little bit? So that uh, people can, uh, <laughs> I, I think you're just... Oh, it's okay. Yeah. It's all right. Uh, hi, I'm James Deaton. Uh, I joined Internet2 last March. And so been part of the U.S. Re regional network community for, for multiple decades. So I'm very excited to be here and, and, and learn. Yeah. Welcome. You're welcome. This is the first time. <laughs> the next time, aren't it? Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> Sorry, Gillian, thank you very much. <laughs> thank, let's thank, thank Gillian for this talk. Um, our next call on Christopher um, to come and give a talk about Pacific Wave. And it's Christopher, it's the first time here as well, right? Oh. Oh, okay, okay, come. So Pacific Wave is a major landing point uh, for for a number of us in the US. Yeah. Did I connect to this Zoom and Hello. Hi, I'm uh, Christopher Bruton. I'm from Scenic in California. I'm a network architect at Scenic, and I'm also the director of network infrastructure at the Pacific Wave um, Exchange. So I'm just going to provide some updates on Pacific Wave, uh, what we've been up to in the past few years and recently. Um, so if I think many of you are already familiar with Pacific Wave, but if you're not, we're a joint project of Scenic in California and the Pacific Northwest Gigapop in um, Washington and Oregon. We're an open exchange. We support commercial and R&D peers, but we're very R&D focused. Um, and we are supported by, in part by the National Science Foundation, and we currently serve 29 countries across the Pacific, um, connecting to the west coast of um, the US. So this is our map. Um, you probably recognize many of the names on this map. Our core locations are Los Angeles, Sunnyvale, and Seattle on the west coast. We also have um, an exchange point at Tokyo as well. And, and we have infrastructure in Guam, and we're working on extending to Fairbanks, Alaska as well in the next uh, couple of years. 
Um, I'll show this map again at the end so you can get a better look at it. Um, this is just the, the actual list of addresses where you can connect to Pacific Wave. Um, so we're, we have several locations, US West Coast and, and Tokyo. Um, and then this list of current participants, I just pulled this from our own website, but um, there may be a few more as well, but these are the ones who are publicly listed. Um, so we, we have quite a bit of participation from both some commercial partners and, and R&D networks across the uh, Asia Pacific region. So I'm going to give some updates on, on several recent developments, uh, particularly our 400G upgrade and then some other, some other topics, uh, which I'll go through one by one. Let's see. So first our 400G upgrade. So we, we have this um, ongoing effort to upgrade our infrastructure to 400 gig capability. Um, this consists both of our customer ports. So Pacific Wave participants can connect natively at 400G as well as the backbone. So we're it's a work in progress. Uh, we're still working on it, but we've installed our 400G switches at the three core locations. So um, the Westin building in Seattle and then our Lumen of uh, scenic Lumen facilities in, in Sunnyvale and Los Angeles. And we, uh, we chose to use the Juniper PTX 10,136 MR switches. These have, I believe, 36 400G ports on them. Um, so this was, this was chosen. They also have cap certain MPLS and, and segment routing capabilities that we may take advantage of in the, in the future. Uh, so that went into this decision as well. So these are already installed. They're up and running. Um, we're still working on final um, production onboarding, but in the next few months, we'll we'll be able to support uh, 400G customer handoffs at at these three locations using um, FR4 or LR4 interfaces. Uh, the backbone planning is also underway and on a similar timeline. So we we already have Sienna Wave servers in place at each location. We've already secure purchased 400G transceivers. So um, step one is is going to be to move to migrate the existing backbone links over to the PTXs. So our so our older switches, our MX ten thousand three switches. We want to migrate the existing infrastructure to the PTXs, which are going to become our new core switches. Um, once that's done, then we'll we'll do a hot cut on the Sienna Wave servers to actually activate our 400G backbone links. So, again, I, I think our estimated completion is by June 2024. I think it'll even happen sooner than that, um, maybe in the next few months as well. It's it's our our top priority project right now. Um, so that that's the the biggest update is probably the 400G, but I'll talk about a few other recent developments. Um, the past few years, we have, we've installed uh, route servers, which are available to all Pacific Wave participants to to peer with. So this a route server will give participants the ability to get routes from other participants without having to set up individual peering sessions. So if you're new to the Pacific Wave Exchange, it's a really good way to get access to other participants uh, without too much fuss. So again, it's, it's we only brought them online fairly recently. Uh, we don't have many participants actually peering with these yet. Um, I think right now it's just Scenic, Pacific Northwest, Gigapop, um, Transpac, and Signet. But uh, we encourage more to peer. I think some of you in this room are Pacific Wave participants. So if you're not um, peering with our route servers, then please do. You can talk to me or, or email our, our NOC to, to get started on that. Um, there's no extra cost. It's, it's included um, in your Pacific Wave membership. Um, this was just a, a bit of an infrastructure diagram. Um, we have the three route servers. There's one in Los Angeles, one in Sunnyvale. Those two are managed by Scenic, and then one in Seattle. 
uh, managed by um, Pacific Northwest Gigapop. If you're familiar with the Pacific Wave Exchange, we have different VLANs for, for different um, geographic links. So I think that the short version of this is regardless of where you connect to the Pacific Wave network, um, you can peer with route servers um, at any of the, the three locations. So another another thing we've set up recently is we're we're partnering with the Route Views project, uh, which is in short a global looking glass project managed by the University of Oregon. They have collectors all over the world um, for different networks to peer with and share their routing tables with. So we've we've we now host um, a dedicated R and D focused Route View collector. It's only accessible from the Pacific Wave Network. Um, so the goal is to provide a, a unique view of R&D routing tables on the, the West Coast and, and Pacific region. So um, it's still fairly new. I don't know who is using the data yet. Um, I think right now we only have Scenic and Pacific Northwest Gigapop um, peering with this, this route views collector, but um, Again, we, we encourage all PackWave participants to, to share their routing tables because this will provide more insight into what different networks have access to. Um, we at Pacific, we don't manage this, these collectors directly, um, but if you're interested in adding yourself to them, then, then you can go to routeviews.org and that's where you'll submit your, your peering request um, to the RouteViews team and they'll they'll configure it and um, and then you'll be you'll be online with with route views. Um, if you're not on the Pacific Wave network, there are many other route views collectors which are available on the public internet. Um, they support BGP multi-hop peering, so you don't even have to be directly connected physically to the same place as a route views collector. So so even if you don't even if you're not on Pacific Wave, you'd, we still encourage you to um, peer with the route views collector somewhere just um, as a, um, to help researchers learn more about um, global routing visibility. So, okay, so next I'm talking about um, Sense AutoGoal, which is, this is a, infrastructure and system that provides automated provisioning of layer two circuits between participants. Uh, Pacific Wave has participated in the in the AutoGo project for a long time. Um, recently, we've overhauled our, our own infrastructure. We're, we're still using the open NSA software, but we've we've moved from dedicated VMs on old hardware to um, to modern Kubernetes cluster-based infrastructure. Um, in LA and Sunnyvale, Seattle's still a work in progress, but that'll happen probably in the next next year or so. So so the advantage of this migration is that it's much easier to configure and manage these um, open NSA instances. Uh, they're fully supported by Scenix systems team. Um, and we can easily reconfigure, redeploy, redeploy using a, a Git and um, Ansible um, workflow. This is um, the overall auto auto goal infrastructure map. So um, Pacific Wave is right in the middle here, but there's many other institutions which participate in this as well. Um, I'm not a, an expert on the the whole sense auto goal as a whole um but if uh I, just, I wanted to share what um how pacific wave participates in it and uh yeah just a quick quick demo of of how we not a demo but just some screenshots um how we configure our topology files in in gitlab and then use awx to to deploy um and uh, it makes it really easy when uh, participants request changes to add VLANs or ports. It, it's pretty straightforward to to update this now. Well, what else do I have? Western Regional Network. I'll, I'll give an update on this. So this is 
collaboration between Pacific Wave as well as some other institutions in the US. So University of New Mexico, um, Front Range Gigapop, which covers uh, Colorado and Wyoming, I believe, and then University of Hawaii. So we, we maintain a shared R&D backbone infrastructure across the Western US. Um, most of this backbone infrastructure is provided by internet too. We also have um, so one link provided by TransTelco. Um, and we're currently completing a major upgrade of the WRN backbone. It's been 100 gig capable for not not sure, like five, 10 years maybe, but we're, we're currently upgrading it to at least 400 G on every link. So here's here's the old existing map. So you can see most of these are just single 100G links um, across the West Coast with Scenic and uh, Pacific Wave. We're, we're at two by 100. But um, what we're almost done with is creating all of these links to at least 400G um, using uh, dedicated spectrum provided mostly by by Internet2. On the West Coast, um, some of it's provided by Scenic, and then between LA and El Paso, it's provided by by TransTelco. Um, this this link may take a bit longer to get online. We're we're focusing on the the Internet two links at the at the moment, but I think in the the next few months we'll we'll be fully operational on um, on these dedicated 400G links. So this. Um, this is tied directly into Pacific Wave as well. So any Pacific Wave participants, this will this will help you reach further into the the interior and, and east coast of, of the United States. Uh, last thing, so a few a few people talked about NAREX this this morning in the, the previous session. I won't dwell too much on it, but it's it's a new initiative to provide dedicated capacity between different R&D exchange points in, in North America. I've listed the participants here, um, and it was officially kicked off at SC23 um, with, with two 400G paths uh, between Seattle and Chicago and LA and Chicago. So these two paths were, were used for demonstrations, um, successfully used and um, yeah, here's here's the NAREX map. Um, so these other paths, I think, are some, still planned. They're still in in the early stages, but uh, but this is a kind of another exciting project to connect exchange points across the U.S. and Canada. Um, last thing I'll I'll mention Fabric. Some of you might be familiar with the Fabric project. It's a distributed computing platform, which is optimized for networking um, experimentation at, at large scales. So um, you can learn more at, at the website here, fabrictestbed.net, but Pacific Wave is directly connected to Fabric nodes in LA and the, and the Bay Area. And we also provide um, connectivity over the to the Fabric Hawaii node, which actually just came online a few weeks ago, I think. Um, so that's that's via University of Hawaii's connection to Pacific Wave as well. Um, here's just the fabric infrastructure map uh, showing all the different fabric locations, uh, except for Europe. The map's too big to, to all fit on, on one page. So I, I just focused on, I think Tokyo's in the wrong place on this map too, but, um, <laughs> but I, di I didn't make this map. So, <laughs> so. Maybe I'll 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 tell them ask them to fix that. But um, yeah, I think the the bright yellow links that's the core fabric backbone, and that's mostly provided by ESNet, I believe, and that's I think at least three by four hundred across the the yellow lines, and then the other links are either one hundred, I think mostly one hundred G, some maybe four hundred G as well. So. Um, the UCSD node, uh, that's not directly connected to Pacific Wave, but it's directly connected to Scenic um, in LA. So, so there's also a, a very close um, connection between that one and, and Pacific Wave via Scenic. Uh, so that's, that's the end of my presentation. Um, so thanks for listening. I just have this map here to, to end on so you can stare at it and 
learn uh, learn more about Pacific Wave if you'd like. If you have questions, um, you can ask me now. If you want to reach me later, my email address is there, or just come come talk to me if you see me see me around this week. So, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Any questions for Christopher? Anyone um, going to connect to the West Coast of US soon or who is not connected and want to connect to the West Coast of US soon? All of us are connected to you. They're <laughs> already connected, I guess. So, yeah. um, so I, I think it's, as you can see, for most of us, we are starting to look at 400G like, connections on, on the pop coming up. Uh, I think I there are some other pops which I have not mentioned here, like the uh, Kisti pop has come up as well. But uh, uh, on the West Coast, you are the big guys mm -hmm. down there. Yeah, all of us connect to, and uh, maybe if uh, we need to do more uh, on our connectivity, we'll come to to your i'm sure yeah yeah well happy to to help and um happy to collaborate so thank you thank you all right i'd like to open the floor we, we have about maybe five ten minutes i think it's always good to open the floor for any anything that you feel that you want to discuss about the network or things that are coming or some challenges that you're having um, or something that you want to share uh, with the rest of the community. I know you would like to talk about the Arctic Connect. <laughs> no more. No more. <laughs> okay. Um, we open the floor for about five, ten minutes. Any any questions or any, anything that anyone wants to bring up for for sharing discussion? Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty excited about the Met. Uh, the Metronova project, uh, I know it's just getting launched. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we've got some initial contributors. I was happy to see it on a slide or two. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know if uh, anybody had dug into some of the details there or had any questions because uh, I know the, the, you know, it's following the Personar consortium model where it's, uh, you know, contributors from the participating organizations are building a development team. And mm -hmm. so if there's any interest there, I know that uh, we've got several people here. Yeah, that are semi-familiar with the project. Oh, great. Yeah. Who who is in uh who are involved in in, in that project project currently? So right now, uh, basically, almost one for one uh, with Perf Sonar. So ES Net Giant Internet Two, IU. Okay. Uh, I'm blanking. There's another one. Uh, TAC. Uh, oh, okay. So so, mm -hmm. it's a great group. Everybody's uh either hiring people dedicated to the software team or identifying people to, to contribute. It's based on, a lot of it's gonna be best based on the previous work on NetSage. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I like the idea of seeing the visualization across the borders, uh, being able to understand the science that's impacted. Yeah. And so I think I'm pretty excited about it. Didn't know if anybody else had any questions. I, I, I think it's very critical um, for us to build tools it, that help us. It's, yeah, I think it's definitely needed from a value proposition of yep. the networks and, and especially the impact across these, you know, major exchanges. I think that's why I'm mm -hmm. really interested in seeing it because we've got message on Transpac and on A&A &A and yeah. uh, uh, this will be the it, keeping it, those projects going. Yeah, it, it actually covers all the way down to, to this region as well, to Asia yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, the message. So in actual fact, um, Quite numbers. Singer and also contributed to the NSH thing. Yeah. Okay. I know I'm keeping you all from your lunch. <laughs> um, if not, let let let's have a chat over lunch and grab hold of each other and have a chat on about it. Thank you all for coming here today. See you all tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, the routing, working groups, and uh, the, another. That was engineering work.